Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and talk about the component or column forms of a vector. Now, we've already seen that vectors can be rewritten as a linear combination of i and j vectors. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to basically call that the component form of the vector. So let's just take a look at an example here. Let's say, for example, I have this vector that has the starting point at a, which is at 1, 1, and it goes to b, which is at 3, 2. So if I was to go ahead and determine how many i vectors I need to get from this point to that point, I need two i vectors, and then plus one j vector, and that's why we come up with the component form of the vector 2i plus 1j, or just j. Okay, so what happens then is that we can also go ahead and change this component form into a more user-friendly form that's called the component form. And I think it's going to be very obvious as to what this, these two forms actually mean and how they relate to one another. Now, one of the things that we do want to go ahead and take a look at as well is that, remember we said that with regards to vectors, if you have a ve two vectors that have the same direction and the same magnitude, then basically you're talking about the same vector. So in other words, location doesn't matter. Placement of the vector does not matter so long as the magnitude and the direction are the same. So, if we go ahead and take a look at these two particular vectors here, notice that they're actually the same vector because, of course, the magnitude and the direction are exactly the same. But one, of course, is actually going to have the starting point at the origin. Now, if you have a vector with the starting point that is placed at the origin, then we call that a vector in standard position. Now, what is the advantage of a vector in standard position? Well, it's going to be very apparent to see that if you start off from 0, 0, and you go to b, which is at 2, 1, then notice that there is a relationship between the ending point, which is 2, 1, and the column form of the vector. So it's going to be very easy to find out exactly what the column form is, so long as you have a vector form, a vector in standard position. Okay, so one of the other things that we want to go ahead and take a look at as well is that we have vectors, uh, and we want, and each vector is going to have a direction and magnitude. Now, how do we go about actually determining the magnitude of this particular vector, say AB? Now, if we go ahead and think about what we're dealing with here, if we think about our basis vectors again, our basis vectors are right here, and right here, and then up right here. So what's happening now is that you're forming a right triangle. If you're forming a right triangle, then of course, if you want to go ahead and find out what the length of this is, which is the magnitude of the vector, then of course, what you need to use is the Pythagorean theorem. And so that's basically what we do. We say that the magnitude of AB, which is written like this, okay, is going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, and that is going to be the square root of 5. So that is going to be the magnitude of this particular vector, AB. Now, one of the things that you want to go ahead and think about is how would you determine direction? And there's a lot of different ways that you can determine direction. Let's go ahead and hear what your thoughts are in class the next time that we meet. So there you go. You have the component form and the column forms of a vector. Right? You can start off with a linear combination of i and j vectors, which is the component form. Change that very simply into the component form. And if you go ahead and you put the vector in standard position, then the ending point and the column form of the vector is going to resemble each other very, very nicely. You have two qualities of a vector, direction and magnitude. If we want to go ahead and find the magnitude of a vector, then we use the Pythagorean theorem, based upon what we have here, the column form or the component form of the vector. And then, something that you want to go ahead and consider as well is how would you determine the direction. Okay, so there you go, component and column forms of a vector, and how to determine the direction, oh sorry, how to determine the magnitude, and we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about how to determine the direction. Okay, give it your best shot. We'll see you in class tomorrow or the next time we meet. See you then. Bye-bye.